Hey, so today I'm here in the park to talk to you about a badass journalist that was really changing the game for women in Little Syria. 81 West Street is where she published her work in 1903 at Al Huda. But who was she? Afifa Karam was born to a Maronite Christian family in Amshit, Lebanon in 1883. Amshit was among the first Lebanese towns to have schools to teach girls, and she went to one of them until she got married at 13 to a relative, John Karam. They both got on a boat and moved to Shreveport, Louisiana, where they started the life in the U.S. And she had a rich husband, so she's the perfect example of the creative freedom you have when you don't have financial constraints. She started submitting articles to Al Huda, a really popular Arabic magazine at the time that was based in Little Syria in New York. At the time, most Syrian American women in the US earned their income as peddlers, but she didn't have to and she was in the minority. So in her late teens, she started submitting articles to Al Huda, an Arab American magazine based in New York. Al Huda is the longest lived Arab American magazine with 74 years in print. Al Huda's editor in chief, Naum Karzil, was Afifa's mentor. He critiqued her writing at a very young age and he helped her become the writer that she grew up to be. In 1911, Mukarzil left the country for six months and put her as editor-in-chief. That's a big honor in the journalism world. That same year, she founded the first Arab magazine for women in the US, The New World, a monthly magazine for women. Two years later, she created another magazine called The Syrian Woman. These were the first women's magazines to be published outside the Arab world in Arabic, and they circulated internationally. At 23, she took a six-month hiatus from writing for Al Huda and her journals, and she wrote her own novel called Badia and Fuad. Here's the thing about this novel. In the literary world, the first Arabic novel was supposedly written by a man, and it was called Zainab. According to research on Afifa, that's not true. She wrote the first Arabic novel because it was published in 1906 by Al Huda Press. She then wrote two more novels, Fatima al Badawiya and Ghada Tamshit, and they were both centering women characters in a very radical way for the time. All three of her novels came before the novel Zina by Muhammad Hussein Haikal, which make her the first Arab novelist, but that is not what people celebrate. In her first novel, she wrote a quote saying, when an honorable woman sees another woman insulted, she feels as though it was all women and not just her. Her work questioned how she was dealing with her Arab and American values. And she criticized restrictive gender roles in a radical way for the time. Her husband, who she married at a very young age, really supported her work. They never had any kids, but every time she published a book, they celebrated as if they had one. The sad thing here is none of Karam's books were republished except for one in 2007. But her works are still online somewhere and you can view them. I'll include a link in the description um, if you speak Arabic. But she was part of the literary scene in Egypt in a beautiful way where she would pay homage to the literary scene by women in Cairo and Damascus and she would call her journal a child of theirs. And she was also mentioned by a popular Egyptian women's journal in Cairo called Fateh al-Sharq, meaning young woman of the East. She was mentioned there twice. Once they republished one of her works and the second time was when the editor-in-chief of Fateh al-Sharq wrote her obituary in 1924. When she died at an early age of 41, she was praised worldwide as the leader of women's feminism and writing in the Arab American world, and for her remarkable contributions to the Arab literary world. Afifa Karam was clearly on the cutting edge of the journalism world in the US, but I've never heard her name before and I'm an Arab woman studying journalism in the US. I think that, you know, it's not surprising, uh, the erasure of women's work, Arab women, Arab people in general, but I think it's about time we think about the people that preceded us in history and made a change, even in the slightest way, and remember them and look at their work. So I'm trying to do that by this video, but I'm, it's a bigger movement. and. Uh, if you're interested, you can always look at the link in my bio and read her works and share it with the world. And I'm hoping that 
eventually her work could get translated uh, from Arabic to English so that it could see a brighter light uh, worldwide. Thanks for watching the video. Now I'm gonna go treat myself to a dollar pizza because I'm cold and hungry. So I'm not on. Subscribe for more videos like this so I can go awkwardly talk to myself in a park. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>